Hello and welcome to The Great Gansy. Why is BTS so popular? To be honest, it's a little bit challenging to start answering that question because in my real life, the only people I know who are fans of BTS is my sister and one of my coworkers. That That's all. I mean, maybe there are other people I know who listen to them, but I haven't asked and no one has told me. So I, I continue to assume that the only people I know who really love BTS are my sister and one of my coworkers. But at the same time, their music videos have hundreds of views. Hundreds. <laughs> I have videos with hundreds of views. Their music videos have hundreds of millions of views, which I think means you're kind of popular. I really don't know, but I feel like they're I feel like they're pretty popular. I have heard the name BTS thrown around on internet spaces before for like years. Okay, so I didn't know what it stood for at first. I had like Korean boy band would never have crossed my mind. I was thinking it was like you know some sort of fictional fandom thing like uh, SPN or DW or CM or whatever. And I thought like, at one point I thought it stood for Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but just like missing the V. At some point I was um, corrected from my wrongs and I realized, okay, it's a music group. And I honestly did not care. I have been listening to BTS aggressively for about 10 days now, which isn't very long, but I still consider myself like a fan. I feel like I've learned so much in those past 10 days. It's kind of crazy. To hear the story about me becoming hooked on BTS and how Prairie dragged me kicking and screaming into it, you can check out this video I'm gonna put up there, which is our previous vlog, which is trying to upload right now, so we'll see if it actually goes up or not. I hate uploading. This video, on the other hand, is me talking about why I think they're so successful, that they have hundreds of millions of views, and that they have, obviously, a gigantic fan base that they sold out like their world tour in like 10 hours or something and like an entire stadium in New York was gone in 10 minutes. I find that a little bit insane but it happens. One more thing to note before I really get into this video is uh, that I really love music but I don't really get into bands ever. Like I listen to music and I'm like okay I like that I'll listen to more of that but I don't like really know anything. Even my favorite bands, which are Simon and Garfunkel, which I love with all my soul, and Broadway music, which is, has a deep-seated root in my heart, and which I love so much, and then my favorite modern artists, Mumford & Sons, American Authors, and Elle City. I, I love them, but I couldn't tell you much about the people involved in the making of their music. But I like songs that make me feel things, and those previous artists, when I listen to their music, I get emotions and I feel things. And that's what I'm looking for with a song or a book or a movie. I just want stuff to make me not cry. I don't like sad stuff, but I want to feel things in my heart, I guess. So three is a magic number. And uh, in this video, I'll be doing three main dimensions, I guess, of why I think BTS is so popular. And then three little subcategories in each of those. So let's get going with number one the surface level. Point one, cute boys that can dance. Prairie can deny it all she likes, but BTS is a boy band, definitely without question. And I define boy band as a uh, group of attractive boys slash young men who uh, their primary audience is a shrieking teenage girls or young women though there are, uh, can be other people who like them. And with BTS, I feel like there's more appeal outside of the fangirl. There's other people can like them too, who aren't just me or my 13 year old sister. <laughs> so in my past, I was homeschooled and I went through a giant phase pretty much all my life where I hated everything popular, especially things of the romantic nature, sort of. Not that boy bands would be like romantic, but like no way would you see me freaking out about the member of a band. I would not be shrieking over Harry Styles or Justin Bieber. I was like, oh my gosh, they're so stupid. Why would you listen to that? It's garbage. And looking back on myself, I was a little bit obnoxious about it, but I'm also glad I didn't get into all of that at a young age because it made me the person I am today, who I'm pretty okay with. So, so I'm not trying to pick on One Direction in this video, but seeing as they are literally the only other boy band I could think of because I am that sheltered. I'm gonna talk about them in comparison to BTS uh, a lot. So I did not like One Direction when they were first popular. I thought it was the dumbest thing ever. When I got a little bit older, I was like, okay, let's listen to a little bit. I think I'm not like anti-boy band anymore. Let's, let's listen to some of their songs. They never really stuck with me. And then we come to today, I'm 23. 
still 23 and I will listen to their songs um, in the car and I will, you know, belt out the lyrics to That's What Makes You Beautiful despite having some deep moral issues with the message of that song. A few of their songs, the ones they play on the radio, I think they're really catchy, they're really fun to sing, especially if you have good friends such as Mari and Annika and Prairie in the car with you. It's just a lot of fun and I have nothing against One Direction except that I can't get into them any further than that. I've listened to their albums and I generally end up getting bored of my brains and turning them off and switching back to the same albums I listen to on repeat over and over again. American Authors, Mumford & Sons, Owl City, Simon & Garfunkel. BTS, on the other hand, unlike One Direction, whose members I can't name. There's Harry, Styles, Nohan, um, Niall, Louis, is there a Dylan? I'm not quite sure. But BTS is a seven members and they not only sing, but they also dance. And oh my gosh, can they dance. It is pretty cool. I, I love dancing. I danced at some point in my high school years and through theater and stuff. And like Cats is my favorite musical, not just because of the awesome lyrics and the fact that it's all themed around cats and the fact that it's just so much fun and there's so much depth behind the, the songs, but also, especially when I got to see it live on Broadway, the dancing is freaking incredible. Sorry, Prairie, I said freaking, but it's awesome. And that is one of the things I love. I love dancing, like Newsies, I love the dancing. Any show that has dancing in it, I love. And BTS, they're not a Broadway show, but BTS as a music group, they dance and they dance really well. It's awesome to watch. And like not just in their music videos, but also like in their live performances that you can see. It, so you like actually see, they can actually, they have the energy and the endurance to sing and dance on stage and it's like, it's crazy. And just goes without saying, they are very attractive people. This is the surface level, I can say that. Part two, a little bit deeper. They're songs. They are attractive, they can dance but they also have songs, which, you know, on the surface level, I didn't really get due to the fact that they're in Korean and I don't speak Korean yet. So how can I, who, well, lyrics are pretty much all that matter to me, how can I find these songs in a language I don't understand so compellingly? Two words, lyric translation. I have spent so much time on colorcodedlyrics.com or whatever, just searching up all these BTS songs and reading through their lyrics and what they mean and just like listening to the songs over and over again and reading the lyrics through and being like, oh, that's cool. I like that. Of course, there are some songs that are not so deep. There's some that are like just normal boy band songs, but then there are some where I'm sitting here like, hmm, that makes me think. And then there are some where I'm like, oh my gosh, my heart just stopped hurting me now, I love this so much. I like depressing songs, which are different from sad songs. And I think I might just call them deep songs, even though that sounds really pretentious, because it doesn't really have to be depressing, there just has to be a meaning behind it that's not just what you see at first. I don't like sad songs very much, especially if they make me cry. I am a type seven and running from sadness is what I do. Not that it's a good thing, I should face my fears more often, but I don't. The, the songs that make me feel things without making me break down sobbing in public, that's what I love. And as I read the BTS lyrics, that's what I see. There's songs that make me feel things without generally making me sob in public. And seeing as they've been a band for like, what, six years? They have a lot of songs to listen to and a lot of lyrics to read. I have barely scratched the surface despite spending hours and hours and hours over the past 10 days listening to songs, watching music videos, and reading lyric translations. Let's get to the music videos now. Like, what the heck? Watch pretty much any of them and you'll be at various levels of what the heck throughout the entire thing because they are, again, I'm gonna preface this by saying I don't watch music videos usually, but the BTS music videos, I like can't stop watching. I just am like glued to the screen like, what is going on? I'm so confused. I don't get it. I really, really want to get it. Just the main thing that keeps me going because I feel like there's something to get and I'm not there and I've just got to watch them more and more and more and more until I finally understand everything that's going on. I don't think that's possible, but I'm going to give it a shot. I mean, you've got Fake Love, Blood, Sweat and Tears, DNA, Spring Day, and they've all got these... It's a lot. It's a lot. Like, they're visually very interesting. The music videos, I'm just like, they've got special effects and stuff and the dancing, which again is awesome and 
the boys are very good looking which is just just a little thing on the side and then the songs and putting it all together yeah great music videos so since i haven't really seen any other music videos i was like maybe there are other music videos that are just as good as this so i decided to watch some of the One Direction. Again, not picking on One Direction, but they're the only other boy band I know. So I decided to watch some of the One Direction uh, music video, and I watched three of them, two, three of my favorite songs, and two of them were fine, and the third one, I was very confused in a different way. It was Steal My Girl, but I didn't really want to know any answers. I didn't want to know why the one One Direction guy was singing with sumo wrestlers. I was just, I did not know. You know, I don't really want to know. I'm just gonna like wipe it from my memory and move on. Okay. First three points done, let's move on to our second layer, the personal layer. Step one, point one, there are seven members of BTS, which seems like a lot. Again, I mentioned I can't even keep track of the five members of One Direction who are more easily distinguishable than the members of BTS. Uh, it's been quite the challenge to learn how to differentiate between them and their voices and stuff because not only do they are they all very attractive Korean guys, they also are always changing their hair color. It's never the same. They're even within music videos, they'll have different costumes at different points. I think their hair color is generally the same in music videos, but there's one point where the lighting makes Shika's hair look different at different sections. I'm like, wait a second, does he have blue hair or gray hair? I can't tell. But, but at the same time, I really have gotten into knowing who they are because that's a big part of what the band is, is knowing who they are, what their personalities are, and how they act. All seven of them have very important roles within the stuff. Like, they all have, like, solos in the various songs. They all have their own personal solo songs. They all have dance sections, some more than others. Different parts in the music video, they're all incredibly important. There isn't a single member of BTS, I would say, is less important than any other member of BTS. And it's also kind of cool, because, like, with seven very different members, you can pick a favorite without feeling like you're being copied by everyone else. Like, I don't know, I feel like Harry Styles is the definite favorite One Direction member, maybe because he's still doing music. I have no idea what they're doing, but I feel like you have a lot of variety. <laughs> this sounds so weird. You've got a lot of variety to choose from amongst the seven members of BTS, and you can find your favorite and become obsessed with them, and then you lie on the floor crying at some point. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Point two. They aren't just pop stars, they are pretty much vloggers as well. You want to see BTS behind the scenes? You want to watch them play with V's dog? Do you want to see their Halloween dance practices complete with costumes? What about watch Jin host a cooking show? You can, because it all exists. It's out there on some YouTube channel that is like official. And not all of the videos are translated into English, but there's still the amount of videos I've watched in Korean where I have no idea what anyone's saying and I'm still laughing my head off is a little bit ridiculous, but it's it's real. It happens all the time. There are also so many interviews and clips from various uh, like talk shows they've been on. You can like watch BTS stuff on the internet and like laugh your heads off at them just being their personal selves, and it's just so funny. It's it's great. Point three. Limitless content. There is literally no end to the amount of videos you can watch about BTS on YouTube. It's been 10 days and I every time I click on one video there's 16 more that come up and I'm like, oh that would be fun. I actually have limited myself, I feel like, by not watching every single compilation of stuff. There's just everywhere. You can watch videos about the history, you can watch videos about the individual members, you can watch people reacting to their music videos. That's been a favorite of mine. I've been watching, I've watched so many of those. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I want to blame Prairie entirely for the amount of time I have spent watching videos about BTS over the past 10 days. Prairie, this is your fault. Now we get to part three, the fictional universe. I'm gonna start this with a little prelude here. Let's go back to my second BTS video I watched. I had watched Dope earlier, which was a pretty straightforward video. I got to see all the numbers. I wasn't quite sure what I thought of it. It was still a cool song. It was a little bit weird. Prairie's like, okay, let's watch another video. So we sat on my bed and she opened her phone or her iPad and decided to show me blood, sweat, and tears. And so through that music video, I was just like, <sighs> range of emotions, extreme confusion, no idea what's going on. They were cool at dancing, but I had no idea what was going on. And Meanwhile, she's sitting next to me, like, shrieking and pointing and pausing and saying, look at that, look at that, oh, this means that, oh, I didn't notice that before, and then all of a sudden she says, and this is when he realizes he's a time traveler. And I was like, what? 
she told me previously that there was a fictional storyline running through the music videos that um, made them all so much more interesting, but I hadn't realized that time travel was involved, and now, now I know the storyline. Fangirls have been writing fanfiction for as long as the internet has existed, if not longer. Uh, I don't read fanfiction, and fanfiction that people write about band members I have always found rather disturbing, unless it's Jenny Nicholson reading it aloud on her YouTube channel, because I am all about literally anything Jenny Nicholson does. So Prairie showed me the video breaking down the BTS storyline, and oh my gosh is it dramatic. It is rather dark and depressing and honestly distressing at some points. I was like, oh my gosh, seriously? It's uh, very fanfiction-y, it's very intense, and yeah, and the thing is it's not fanfiction, it's like real, sort of? I mean, it's not real, but it's like official. It's like they've actually done this, the company that does BTS, they've woven this storyline in specifically with these alternate fictional characters for the band members and their lives and the <laughs> time travel. <laughs> Basically, okay, I can't explain it now. You'll, if you get this deep, you can find plenty of videos explaining the fictional universe of BTS. I'm just gonna say here, it's not great literature or even story content, but it definitely is emotional and uh, adds a lot more feels to all those music videos. I, I haven't cried yet, but I have felt things. And we've mentioned before, I really like feeling things. Point two, double meanings to the song lyrics. This fictional universe, keeping that in mind, the songs no longer are just songs. For example, J-Hope has this song, Mama, that means one thing when you're thinking about J-Hope, the person who is great, and then it means a completely different thing when you're thinking about J-Hope's fictional character, which is like, oh my gosh, that's really sad and depressing. Let's just, just move on from here. All of them have solo songs in the album Wings, and all of them have two meanings, one being with the actual person and the other one being with their fictional universe self. And it's really interesting to see and like to read through the lyrics again with that in mind. Point three, not only did the lyrics get more interesting, the music videos get way more interesting too. There's so much symbolism and links between them and stuff when you actually pay attention to the characters and what parts of the song they sing and what they're doing during the music video. Like you have to watch the videos over and over again because you're like, oh my gosh, why is Jungkook here when he was just there? What the heck is V doing at this point? Wait a second, Jin. That's weird. Stop that. Oh my gosh, he's whistling that song from DNA. I can hear it. And then it just, it just goes deeper and deeper as you pick out little details and sections and everything just becomes so much more clear and more confusing at the same time. There are just so many things you would have never noticed the first time that you were um, watching. So those are my three layers of BTS and why I think they're so popular. And now I'm gonna take this and look at a song and explain to you how the layers play into this one song. The song I'm gonna talk about is Spring Day, the music video, not just the song. So the music video of Spring Day is what I'm talking about here. As a music video, it's very pretty. It's, they don't have any dancing in it, which is unusual, but it's not that sort of video. It's more bittersweet, quiet, kind of sad, with a little bit of hope thrown in there too. Uh, the lyrics talk about uh, missing somebody mostly that you've lost from your life through unknown circumstances, undefined circumstances and the feelings that go with that. There are like references in it to even like Ursula Le Guin, Le Guin, some person, person who wrote The Ones Who Walk Away From Omelas, which is a short story I read once and there are references to that in there, which was really cool as a person who likes reading stuff to see that. And it's just a pretty video. There's a lot there and it's just, it's, it's a good song. It's a really pretty song. And then we get to the second level, which is the real level. And this song, uh, a cool thing about BTS is that they write some of their own lyrics and RM and Sugar were involved in the writing of this song, which kind of makes it a little bit more personal and cool. That adds, there was like, um, references and in honor of this uh, ferry that crashed off the coast of South Korea and 304 people died, uh, 250 of which are high school students. And that's sort of what this music video is commemorating. And so that adds another layer of sadness and meaning to it, um, looking at it through that lens. And then we get to the third lens, which is the uh, fictional universe, which then adds the mystery because you're watching it and you're seeing the different people and you're like, why is he on the train, but he's also here? Why is this happening? What the heck is V doing? 
Why is Jin doing all these things? What is he thinking about here? What's going on? It just adds a lot more to think about and I feel like I'm gonna watch it probably 20 to 30 more times this weekend because it's been my latest obsession video. <laughs> Someone please help me. All the subtle details are impossible to explain without giving you a 30 minute explanation of the entire phys physical, fictional universe, but I'm not, I'm not the person to do that. You can find that on your own if you want to. The emotions are real. That's all I'm gonna say. In conclusion, Simon and Garfunkel, Mumford and Sons, Owl City, American Authors. I love all of these musicians, musicians, groups, because they make me feel something in my soul that I want to, I want to listen to more. I want to sing them, I want to hear them, I want to learn the lyrics. They just, they make me feel something. BTS has now joined that list, which I was not expecting, but I'm really happy they have because it's very hard for me to find artists that have music I like like this. And so that I have BTS now, it's really cool. I'm really happy to have this popular K-pop band that actually has substance to their lyrics and that's upbeat, exciting music or pretty slow music. And it's just, it's um, so fun to listen to. I love it. Anyways, it's too late for me. Check out BTS at your own risk. You might not like them, even after watching their music videos or reading the lyric translations, watching them practice a dance, dressed as Snow White in Six of the Seven Dwarves, but you might get drawn in and be unable to leave. If that happens to you, well, let me know in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe, and uh, I will see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching, by the way. This is a long video, I'm sure, and I'm sure it's gonna take me forever to edit it tomorrow, but yeah, if you watch it, thank you.